Okay, so Tottenham played with a 4-4-2 diamond formation. Something a little bit like this. And we would definitely have watched the game against Chelsea where we would have seen Chelsea really struggle with Tottenham pressing the wide areas. So he would have realised that Tottenham were trying to fill the middle of the pitch and they were leaving these wide areas where they would later then go and press. Unai Emery, he set up with a 3-4-3 system. I'm going to put the goalkeeper in first. I'm actually going to put the centre forwards in first. I should obviously put the defence in first, but I'm just going to put the three centre forwards there so that we can get an idea of Unai's thinking that by using three players to take up four of Arsenal's, they can get superiority in other areas. If the ball comes into these wide areas here, for example, this fullback is going to be a little bit concerned about pushing out and leaving three at the back with Arsenal's wide strikers with pace. So he's going to be a little bit cautious about moving out into this area. Now, if we look at the... Oh, we're missing a, missing a play here for Tottenham. Let's put him back in. Okay. So now if we look at the Arsenal defence, with three at the back, when Arsenal have got possession, they can move into these wide areas, into here, and into here, and it's going to be quite tough for these Tottenham players to come out to press. Why is it going to be tough for them? Because Arsenal have already got four in midfield. So in theory, Arsenal can get one player into that area, two players into this area, and three players into this area, and Spurs are one and two into that area. So they've got numerical superiority in the wide areas now, Arsenal. So when Arsenal have got the, the ball, let's just highlight, for example, here. When Arsenal have got possession in the wide areas, Tottenham have to shift across to try and prevent Arsenal from playing like they did against Chelsea and what that means was that Arsenal were left with the opposite side of the pitch which they could exploit. Now I showed this in my analysis of Chelsea that what Chelsea needed to do against Tottenham was try and switch the play either back into here and then wide or straight across wide or wide. They had to use these wide areas to be able to make the most of the fact that Tottenham play with a really, really centralised formation. So now we're just going to have a look at some of these examples. Here's one example early on. Here, as we can see, we've got a lot of Tottenham players in this area. So when the ball comes back into holding their left-sided centre-back, Tottenham have got five players in this area. So all they need to do is just get that ball and switch it onto the opposite side of the pitch, which is exactly what they do. So that ball's just come all the way across there, and Tottenham have to shift across really quickly to be able to stop Arsenal from creating an attack. So all these players have now got to shift across and run 20, 30, 40 metres backwards towards their own goal and able to defend simply because of one switch of play and because of that switch of play Bellerin is able to drive along the line and try and make a pass through here and these are just early signs from from Arsenal trying to switch the play and use the wide areas to really combat that tight centre midfield from Tottenham here's another example this time Bellerin's being pressed and to be honest he's under a little bit of pressure but he does quite nicely just to flick it over the Tottenham player's head and then on the next image, just check out what Unai Emery's doing. So I'm just going to try and highlight Unai Emery here to see if this works. Unai signaling to his team, get the ball onto the opposite side of the pitch. Bellerin's just going to play this pass into midfield and then he's going to switch it out onto the opposite side. Okay, I've paused it at this moment here just before he switches the play so we can see one, two Arsenal players in that outside channel. 
but I'd also like to highlight, let's just take that, put that here. The three Arsenal players which I put in out before, taking up those four Tottenham defenders. And as always, that really tight, compact midfield of Tottenham and Arsenal, if he just gets forward, I've got a 2v1 in this wide area. Again, this time Arsenal are 1-0 up. And just looking at the Tottenham players in this section. Again, loads of players over here. And check out Bellerin at the bottom of your screen. Bellerin at the bottom of your screen. Loads of space out there. For me, it's very clear that Unai Emery has told his players that when it's congested in one area, to switch the play out as quickly as you can. Here, it's Oveira switches the play quickly he doesn't even look up he knows where where Bellerin is and he hits this cross field pass across so when this ball arrives here at Bellerin just check out the fact that the Tottenham players have got to shift across one two has to come across because if this player here from Arsenal makes this movement in Bellerin can make that pass into here and Tottenham are exposed and also because of this movement space begins to emerge between these two centre backs which Arsenal can try to exploit so just by switching that play across the pitch you've now got option number one and option number two for an attack another example Arsenal have got the ball here with Bellerin on this side of the pitch and Bellerin has played a pass here into Toyveda and he straight away knows where the superiority is check out again almost getting tired of saying this how tight the compact Tottenham are on this side of the pitch loads of players on this side of the pitch so that when Toyveda spreads the ball wide Arsenal have now got superiority in this side of the pitch where the Arsenal player can drive forward with the ball and create a 2v1 situation with this Tottenham player here. This results in Tottenham having to shift the cross really quickly to try and prevent Arsenal from creating a goal scoring opportunity but you cannot shift across the pitch constantly the whole match eventually you're going to start to get tired and gaps are going to open up and people talk about Arsenal looking fresher and more energy simply they used the ball better when they had it and Tottenham had to run after it One of the problems which Tottenham had was playing out from the back, and particularly from Yoris. Tottenham here had the back four, or back, and then Dyer was also back. So here in the view, we've got five players against Arsenal's three players. Three players there. Tottenham should be able to play, play out. They've got five players back and the goalkeeper. Just out of view also is Sissoko who in the minute we're going to show an image of him coming inside here so that's so that's six outfield players will be coming in plus the goalkeepers at seven players against Arsenal's three so there's plenty of options for Tottenham to play out what are these options one you can just play it into the center back and of course you can expect the Arsenal player would then come out and press him There we go. So if he does come out to press him, it's quite simple really. If Tottenham can play that ball out here, then they're out. They've played out from the pressure. If he can't play that ball in, then he just gives it back to Yoris. As you can expect, the Arsenal man would then come in and pressure him again. And Dyer will quite simply move into this kind of area here to receive if Tottenham have got the, the confidence to do that. So that's one option. And the second option, at now that you can see Sissoko is in the picture and Dyer has just moved out from there into here to give the Arsenal player a decision to make. Do I cover Dyer or do I cover Sissoko? So now Yoris has got an extra, an extra option. I could just play it into here he might then have to give it back 
or he could just play it straight through here. If he plays, if he's confident enough to play that ball through here, they've broken the press and they can play out. With Sissoko being just behind this line here, he can receive that ball, turn and play out. That's not what Joris does though, he decides to play long and the next image we're going to see what happens when you play long when you've got seven players back against three. Okay, so in this image we can see that obviously if they've got seven players back, Tottenham now only got four players forward and Arsenal have obviously got superiority in this area. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Arsenal players they're able to, to defend this long ball and of course on this occasion Arsenal win possession back and this is just one example of Joris not being confident enough to play short or for Tottenham to not be confident enough to play short and play out from the back due to Arsenal's intensive pressure in the early minutes. This is another example of Arsenal's pressure causing Joris problems here Tottenham player pass back into the goalkeeper and when the ball arrives Arsenal are pressing with two players and we've got a four against two situation with the Tottenham players. Two centre-backs, goalkeeper and Dyer. So we've now got pretty much a diamond which basically means there's always a passing option for the goalkeeper. If he needs to take a touch to control it just to give his, t his teammates time to, to make a better passing option than he should. But this pass straight through the middle is open. And Dyer is even calling for it. So again, another great option for Tottenham to play out. But Joris and Tottenham don't have the confidence to do so. And they end up playing long. And what happens? Arsenal, again, got superiority in this area. and Tottenham lose the ball again because they've got, obviously got inferiority of players in this area. Another example, Tottenham play the ball back to the goalkeeper and I can't understand why Joris is incapable of playing just a pass into here. Play a short pass into there, he can turn and then play a pass out to here. No, again he plays long and again Tottenham lose possession because they've got inferiority of numbers because as we can see Tottenham have got three players and we've got that Arsenal block in the middle of the pitch which is obviously preventing from, from Tottenham winning many of those long balls so again Joris needs to be more calm at playing out from the back in order to counteract Arsenal's press yet again another example ball comes back into Joris and instead of taking a touch and working with that diamond, which is there, which I highlighted before, that diamond against two Arsenal players, all he needs to do is take one touch, control it, and wait for the passing options to arrive. Either into here, well it should be blue, but don't worry about it, into here, or into here. There's always one passing option available to him, but he never takes any of them, he just plays it long. On this occasion, they're actually quite lucky that Arsenal make the foul. But again, what is, I don't understand what the point is in playing a long ball when you've got numerical superiority in your own half and playing a ball in to your strikers when they've got a five against two situation in that zone. This is just after Tottenham scored two goals and they play the ball back into Joris. And this time, as you can imagine, now that they're 2-1 up, they've got a bit more confidence that Joris now has controlled the ball the Arsenal centre-backs are open and they've got one Arsenal player pressing them and they're more confident to play out. He's got two passing options either into there or into there and he makes this one into here. And now Tottenham have got options to play forward either into here, into here and bounce it back into midfield just from having a little bit more calmness on the ball from the goalkeeper. This is another example, Tottenham are going to play the ball back into the goalkeeper and this time it's going to be a little bit calmer and Tottenham are going to offer, offer positions for him to play out just like they always have but this time he's actually going to take it. So when that ball's arrived into the goalkeeper, Tottenham again are creating options for him to play out and this time he's got the confidence to take a touch and play that pass into here. 
That's the press broken. The only problem in this occasion is that Ericsson actually didn't look over his shoulder before receiving the ball and they played themselves into a bit of trouble. However, if he'd have looked before receiving, he could just turn out and come out this way and they would have broken the press. I have to say that it wasn't just Joris who was panicking a bit with the playing out from the back. Here, Joris has the confidence to play the ball in to his right centre back. And again, we've got numerical superiority for Tottenham in this zone. However, the centre back has decided to play long when he didn't need to. Because if you just play that ball back into Joris, you can then either play it into here or into here or switch it across the other side into your fullback who's around about over here. But by playing it in long, you just end up losing possession and an Arsenal are able to cause more problems. Okay, so in the second half, Tottenham started with the same system with that diamond formation in midfield and Arsenal made a slight change. Not only personnel, but by moving Ramsey keepers but by keeping the two centre forwards fixed here and that centre forward role moving Ramsey back now gives Tottenham a different problem now Tottenham have got four players being occupied by the two centre forwards in this zone here and Arsenal have got an extra man in midfield so now Tottenham are outnumbered in this zone here because they've got the wide players and now they've got three versus two in this central zone and Ramsey arriving late into the box into this area here is causing Tottenham all sorts of problems which we're going to have a little look at now here we can see the back four from, from Tottenham being occupied by those two strikers and then Ramsey has just moved in from this area here and he's driving through into that space and this actually leads to the first goal where Ramsey was able to get the ball back into here and then an early strike on goal, was a pretty nice goal from, from Arsenal. Again we can see the two Arsenal strikers here occupying the four defenders from Tottenham Remember I said it's really difficult for these Tottenham players to come out into these wide areas because it allows those Arsenal forwards to make these runs in behind here. Because these runs in behind here is what creates that difference in between the centre-backs which Arsenal are then able to filter passes into these areas and cause Tottenham plenty of problems. And it certainly wasn't as if, and if we remember from the images I showed you before, it certainly wasn't just a problem caused by Ramsey. Ramsey in this image is out of the play, and these problems are just simply caused by Unai Emery's clever system, which he's used to combat Tottenham's diamond midfield. Here's another example of Ramsey in that space just behind the two strikers, and now they're playing that 3 4 1 2, which I mentioned before. Really difficult to pick up and on this occasion he just makes a ball through here and they've got another opportunity to score. So difficult to pick up and Ramsey when he's just playing in that space behind the two centre forwards. Again, like I pointed out, those two centre forwards, which I'm highlighting yet again, are taking up. on this occasion five Spurs players so when the ball comes in to the wide area Ramsey's able to make a late run into the area where if the ball is fired into this zone here Ramsey as you can imagine is going to have a free shot on goal Arsenal didn't have it all their own way though let's be honest Son had plenty of opportunities to win the game here early on when it was 1-0, a ball over the top and Son was in one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Here following a throw-in, he was able to drive in between the Arsenal defence and get a shot on goal. 
and Arsenal were lucky not to be 1-1 at this moment. Yet again, this is another attack before Tottenham scored, where Son was driving forward and Arsenal were able to clear the danger. This occasion, Son looking for the space behind the Arsenal defence, where they found him, and this actually ended up with the free kick, which Tottenham ended up scoring their first goal, with Son winning the free kick here. And then later on, Son driving through the Arsenal defence again, and Son ends up winning a penalty for Tottenham to make it 2-1. And even at 2-2, Son had an opportunity to score. If it had made it 3-2, it would have been really difficult for Arsenal. It's all too easy to look at the final scoreline and say Arsenal were easy winners because it could have easily turned out the other way. However, all in all for me, Arsenal completely deserved the victory. Emery was tactically correct in almost everything he did during the game. And it's going to be a very interesting season for Arsenal a very interesting season for Tottenham as well but I just get this feeling that Unai Emery is going to do fantastic things with Arsenal this season